you know, it's antennas are a subject that everybody has an opinion on. Anybody can build an antenna. You just take a piece of wire and put it up in the air and there's your antenna. You know, and because of this, everybody can be an antenna expert. We can talk about antennas uh, that uh, the best thing I've ever put on the air, you would not believe the contacts I made with that antenna. It's probably the best thing I've ever done, this antenna. So building a good antenna and your antenna psychology or philosophy, which by the way is explained in uh, my video, Antenna Psychology. You might want to check out this video. Um, this will place you in one of four quadrants of types of hams simply based on your antenna choices. So that's an interesting video, but this is not about uh, antennas that people use or antennas that people buy uh, or the best antenna you've ever built. This video is about the worst antenna you've ever built, but it worked. In other words, you broke every rule, you took the advice and threw it out the window, and you decided that you were putting up an expedient antenna and uh, you, you were your HOA or your college campus wouldn't allow you to put up a proper antenna. You couldn't have an antenna on your car without it being destroyed in short order. So you did something crazy and you'd be amazed how well that antenna worked. That's what this video is all about. So you might have seen the, uh, the recent video by uh, Raisa where she puts a dipole on the ground and then she puts a dipole up in the air and she sees one or two dB of difference. That's what I'm talking about. The antenna that got blown down by the wind and it's half of it's laying on the ground, but you know what? It works better than it did when you had it up in the air. Welcome to unusual, unusable, and unsubstantiated antenna miracles. So Johnny Novice needs a first antenna. Of course, the logical first antenna for the kid should be maybe an 80, 40 meter dipole fed with coax or a boring ground mounted vertical. These all make sense. They work then. They still do. No discussion on these antennas. But that was not what I was drawn to when I looked into the ARRL handbook. You notice I'm using the term ARRL instead of ARRL now because Bert told me this is the new trend. Nope, I saw more interesting antennas in the handbook that I was given. The first one was a bamboo pole with about a million turns of number 14 wire on it so that it kind of was like picking up a giant 2x4 over your head. It even had this spike on top, which I imagine helped the radiation properties, maybe. The second antenna that drew my attention was this MIT broadband coaxial stub dipole with shorted coax sections and open wire tuning sections. And, uh, you know, these two antennas would be obvious choices for my novice shack simply because they had a big cool factor. Thanks, handbook. Of course, I didn't know anything about the helically wound vertical or, you know, things like resonance or ground planes or... So I just mounted it to the chimney of the house and I ran some wire back to the transmitter. I drove a ground rod. Uh, it was basically six or eight meters of number 10 wire up into the shack window. And of course, hooked all this up to the ARC-5 command set transmitter that I got from Fair Radio Sales. Now, fortunately, the ARC-5 had this roller inductor, and it loaded up very nicely because I had this flashlight bulb across about 12 inches of wire right off the antenna post, and it lit up brightly when you hit resonance. Something was radiating. In fact, my father yelled that the lamp downstairs just came on by itself. <laughs> my first actual contact with this beast was a Canadian station. That's right, I was doing DX right out of the gate. Radiate? Should a bird have contacted the end of that Tesla coil antenna, he would have likely vaporized on the spot. 
my second antenna came from the need for this 40 meter you know thing and maybe I could do 15 meters for DX uh, I had just built up the handbook 6DQ6 crystal cracker novice transmitter and uh, I had scraps of 75 ohm TV coax laying around so I cut these up and I uh, took some wood molding and I cut them up for the open wire spreaders and through some miracle I assembled that antenna and uh, after a lot of cut and try I actually had a 2 to 1 SWR according to my Lafayette SWR meter and uh, hey it worked so today I would suppose some beginner might be looking at some of the more exotic antenna projects in all the books I don't know uh, the three foot loop antenna uh, the 49 to 1 on un long wire there's all kinds of crazy antennas now that might have a, a high cool factor Anyway, my message is keep it simple when you're starting out. Leave the experimenting for later. Underground antennas? You bet I'm interested. After all, I heard that Tesla said that 90% of the radiation is underground anyway. Plus, my HOA would have to dig to find the antenna. Now, there's some very scientific uh, research that's been done. Um, experiments with uh, different dielectrics, uh, trenching, and of course uh, cableways that uh, allow the proper feed line uh, to work and uh, certain depths and things like that. There's, there's a lot of experimenting that's been done, but underground antennas are real, my friends. And just think of all the advantages during, uh, you know, an uprising or a thermonuclear exchange you know, while trying to do CQ worldwide from your bunker. Always remember there are those that are less fortunate than you are, who don't have yards or trees or ways to put up a tower or some place to erect a proper dipole or long wire or inverted L. For those of us that lived in apartments or were in dorm rooms in college, and high rises in cities, you really got to figure out how you're going to have an HF antenna. So indoor HF antennas, like window frame antennas, oh, the slinky, the slinky, the slinky dipoles, loop antennas, tuned and untuned, temporary balcony antennas where you're dropping wires on weights. These are a fact of life for many city apartments, high-rises, and dorm rooms. How about the attic? People put all kinds of antennas in their attic. Everything from shortened dipoles, uh, random dipoles with wires running all over the place. Even indoor beams have been done in attics. I have had a few doozies. Like I said, I lit up my aluminum window frame with a delta match on floor five of my college high-rise dorm room, which got me in big trouble, actually. You see, this was the time when the status symbol was to have the loudest speaker and amplifier set up in your room. And uh, my NCX3 into the window frame on 20 meters, let's just say that caused some real trouble for those Sansui's and Kenwoods on the floors above and below. I had to shut that situation down pretty fast or I was going to get beat up. In one apartment, I was on the second floor and there was this big maple tree right outside my window. I managed to get a full 80 meter loop around that whole tree and it fed right in at window level with a tuner. Nobody could even get close to the wire. And boy, did that vertical loop perform. My buddy Spencer, growing up down in Brooklyn, he always used a weighted wire, kind of like a fishing setup, that he dropped down from, I don't know, the fourth or fifth floor in his Brooklyn high-rise every night. And he was doing QRP with, uh, I think, a Heath 8, HW7 or 8. Now, that's what I call fishing for signals. Remember to reel that in, Spence? Hustler Mobiles. 
you know, you, you can take any mobile antenna and mount it at a, usually a 45 degree angle off a second story, third story balcony, you know, those nice wrought iron balconies, you'll get great results. And you can take it in, hide it, nobody even knows that you've been on the air that night. So I think we have exhausted the, uh, the apartment, the flat, the, the house type uh, antenna that uh, you don't want your neighbors to see or you, you simply can't have an outdoor antenna. Uh, let's not forget the, the basic uh, rain gutter antenna style where sometimes you're actually not actually using the rain gutter, but you're putting something around the house like it was a rain gutter. Um, you can do that in an inverted L style uh, where you're feeding through a tuner from the basement or you can do a full wave loop around the whole house and of course uh, everybody knows about the flagpole very patriotic antenna uh, so uh, hope this hasn't exhausted you this little section on uh, home antennas and of course a big wink and nod and hurrah to those of you in other countries that have gardens uh, this is hardly a handicap, but there's a lot you can do in a back garden and uh, flower pots, coat hangers, all kinds of trestles and different types of arrays that you can uh, put up in the garden. So anybody can make a decent mobile antenna for HF. You know, you just buy a ham stick or, you know, bug catchers, you name it. There's lots of great mobile antennas out there. You follow a few rules, you get your grounding right, minimize the noise, and uh, get that current into the rod, so to speak, and you're on the air. But what about when you break the rules and you're making uh, an H HF mobile antenna that, you know, it just is not right, should not work, has no business being on a vehicle? Well, you know, my favorite mobile band is 75 meters. 75 is, it's open most of the time. You can get real DX at night. It's a lot of fun uh, on 75 meter mobile. And I didn't want to have some 12 or 18 foot vertical on the back of the car. Plus, I wasn't doing it all the time, so I wanted something I could just plop on the car, use the radio, take it off the car, and, and go. So I came up with this terrible idea that seemed to work just fine. Basically I took a Hustler tip and I used the worst one they make, the 75 meter low power one, which uh, everybody says is the least efficient. Um, actually there are people that actually cut off that plastic sheath on the outside of the coil just to improve the efficiency. That's been proven to, to help. But I used that tip as the basis. I got a a three foot piece of PVC pipe and I made like a helical wind up to the bottom of the antenna and then I got a mag mount and just plopped that on the bottom and called it a day. There it is. 75 meters, it resonated, it worked and I was on the air. The whole thing couldn't have been more than five feet long but uh, you know what? I made lots of contacts with that antenna, used it, I even used it on AM in the car. I used it with an ARC-5 setup that didn't put out any more than 25 watts of AM and had a ball with that little mag mount 75 meter antenna. So another uh, 75 meter mobile antenna that shouldn't have worked but did, uh, basically when I was running the full size Hustler with the bottom mount, the kids at school were uh, taking it and making it into uh, an inverted L antenna in the parking lot. and uh, I decided that I was going to beat them by putting a 102 inch CB antenna on the car. The old stainless steel CB whip is hard to break and uh, you can fold it over. It doesn't look too bad. So what was I going to do with this 102 inch CB whip for 75 meters? Well that's simple. I just put a big coil in the trunk and I tapped up till I found the 50 ohm point and I used an alligator clip till I resonated it to 75 meters. Now you didn't want to touch that antenna when I was transmitting and it really shouldn't have worked on 75 but I used that for years like that and it was a pretty much indestructible 75 meter mobile whip. 
Now today you could put an ATU in the trunk and you'd have all bands with the uh, CB whip. So don't be afraid to experiment with your mobile antenna. You might be surprised what you can accomplish even if you break all the rules. I want vlog! Boy oh boy! So one of the crazier ideas lately for antennas is called the loop on the ground or the log. Uh, here I have a high gain one to one ballon and about 55 feet of coax going back to the shack and all I've got is looks like some number 22 brown wire. This is really thin stuff and I've got it laying on the ground. A full wave 20 meter loop it's roughly a square shape. Now, I like loop antennas, and I've got a pretty big one up in the air up here. You can see it. It's a 10 meter and a 15 meter rectangle loop in the vertical position, and that works really well. Single feed, way up in the air. It really does great for DX. But what about when you put the loop literally right on the ground? Can you make contacts? Let's try it. This is Kilo Oscar 4, Golf Alfa Romeo QRZ. Whiskey United 2 Delta. Whiskey United 2 Delta QSL. QSL, Whiskey United 2 Delta. You're 5'9 here in the state of New Hampshire. Roger, Roger. Got you 58, 58, Park Kilo 2726, North Carolina. Thank you using a loop on the ground. Loop on the ground, 20 meters. Roger, roger, I'm ready to vertical antenna with elevated change quarter wave cut radials here in the park. 73s. 73, my friend. This is Kilo Oscar 4, Kyle Tom for Romeo, QRZ. Kilo 225 to QRZ. Whiskey United 2 Delta. Whiskey United 2 Delta. You know, you, I think you sensed that I needed uh, that repeated because I really questioned it here. With the United 2 Delta, about a 5-3, five, 5-3 uh, three, five, three in the Kilo 2252. Very good. Uh, this is Whiskey United 2 Delta. My name is Mike. You're 5-9 into New Hampshire. I'm using a loop on the ground. That's right, a 20-meter loop sitting on the ground. Over. Whiskey, you from 2 uh, Delta. Man, a loop on the ground is doing fairly well for you, man. Uh, stand by for the second operator. Whiskey Uniform 2 Delta, this is Kilo Echo 8, Foxtrot Hotel Bravo. Same 5-3, same part. Yeah, that loop on the ground is doing pretty good. Yeah, I'd do better if it was in the air, but I just wanted to try something crazy today. 73s, guys. You know what? I'm always down for something crazy, and I appreciate that. That is just fun. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for hunting 73. QRZ. So this is an Australian uh, station that's able to be picked up quite easily by the loop on the ground. But I'm finding that I can't work any DX with the loop on the ground. It's very much a high angle radiator. Okay, we've got a noise level going here. And the antenna's up at about a five or six foot level. And I'm going to lower it to the ground and let's see what happens. And now the loop is on the ground. I think the noise went down some.